Britain, to Australia. When they went to Australia, she had to get a job. She's hard working. She went to Australia, and she did incredible, absolutely incredible drawings, ink drawings, and in watercolors. Then after that, she, she, came, she went from Australia back to England. She started to teach in England, and she kept her little resumes from these funky schools where she was teaching in England. She supported the family by painting and painting and painting and teaching. Then she was doing her mixed medias. Then after her, well, then she did, sorry, her watercolors first, beautiful watercolors. Then she went into her sand colors. Some of you here own some of her sand paintings. Some of you here own some of her watercolors. Uh, some of you own some of her oil paintings. Then what happened was, um, I thought, my gosh, you know, this is a legacy. I got to protect it. I knew what my mom's goal would have been and what she was trying to do, but she just couldn't pull it all together because she didn't know where it all was. On the 11th, I staged a meeting. I had to make a decision for my mom because my mom uh, was the first woman accepted into having a painting there with Louis, Saint Louis Segrist and Lundy Segrist, and she was the first woman. And I thought, my mom deserved that. So I, when I gathered all this stuff together, I thought, crikey, i got to clean up this room. So I'm vacuuming it all out, vacuuming it, getting all the dust off the walls, critiqued all her paintings, got her best oil painting, her best watercolor painting, and her best painting from Europe, and staged all three. And then all her sand paintings, I scratched all the, the um, dirt, you know, the, the, the crap off the, from the rats all off of it. Found a painting that she had done me that I never knew. Oh, I had to close the perfect. garage door down because my crime was so bad. Oh, it was God, so bad, I had to close the garage door down. Um, but anyway, uh, then, I, so I staged the meeting, and then I got the, paint palette out of the freezer and cerulean blue was stuck to the chicken breast. So I pulled the chicken breast <laughs> off the cerulean blue, cleaned it off as much as possible, covered it back with cellophane, put it on the pile. Then I went to the Goodwill and this little funky, horrible looking stool, I gave it to the Goodwill. I said, mm -mm, no good. I got back to the house. I put it on the pile, staged the meeting, they were there for four hours. They went over everything. We unpicked all the, you know, the paper, unpicked it. We're all going, whoa, because there was stuff Janine and I hadn't even seen. We hadn't even seen it. We left it purely only for them to see is private viewing. They took it all back to St. Mary's, and then the next day they called and they said they've taken her in on a permanent basis. So one month after my mom passed, my mom is looking up here and saying, fantastic to all her friends and she got she deserves what she got she oh, worked no. hard oh. all her life and she supported the family uh, next year the museum is going to have a show uh, in her honor of all her european paintings of honfleur madame florette's uh, house uh, paintings of switzerland they're all not for sale but it's a show just of european europe of her snow paintings so that is what is going to be happening She's got three galleries, one in Half Moon Bay, the garden, and Jerry Epperson, and Mercedes, and uh, the Carmel. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know, and I'm, thank God I'm done. Okay, good job. We all meet hundreds and hundreds of people. You know, every day, we bump into people. That's why I'm doing But there are these certain people <laughs> that you meet them, and your life is never the same. It could be your wife. Make me cry it now. could be someone like Pam Glover. And these people are out there, and when you meet them, it's like a talisman. And for me, it was uh, Lou Segris. And it was through Lou, it was like cycle after cycle. And people like Pam and Lundy Segris and all these painters, and it just bubbles on. But Pam is certainly the hub of that dynamic of sparking people and touching them and changing their life for the better for the rest of that life. And it's kind of those people that I, when I think about what I want to do and how it's better to touch them. And I learned that from my elders and Can people. You do that, Nikki. Like Pam.
Now, some friends couldn't be here today, and one of them thought it important enough to send a, a letter, which I told him I would read. And this is uh, Terry St. John, who's in, uh, how do you just pronounce it? Chiang Mai, Thailand, where he's wow. retiring mm -hmm. six months a year. So it's Memories of Pam. In 1975, Louis Tigris asked me if I would like to go painting with him out of doors. Lou had had a stroke, and his doctor thought it would be the best thing in the world to get him out of the house and active, and so that's what was the impetus of this. A short time later, Lou, Peter Brown, and I were out painting from a hill near Lafayette. A few weeks later, Lundy and Pam joined us. This was the nucleus to what would become an ever-expanding group of painters, many of whom continue to work out of doors to this day. Our group went out several times a week for about 10 years. Pam was Lundy's favorite student and a mm, longtime friend. Pam mm. soon developed an articulate style. She created many lively, strong colored depictions of the various spots we visited. On Adorable occasions, child. I would go afterwards with Lundy to Pam and George's house. We would have hilarious fun. George would regale me with incredible made up tales including the ongoing saga of the Umiak women, who were indigenous to Alaska, world famous as rowers, and renowned for their vivid green outfits. <laughs> According to George, the Umiak women frequently could be seen rowing in Berkeley's aquatic park, and it always seemed to be the upcoming weekend. Pam and George were always good hosts and always full of surprises. One evening as Lundy and I started to leave the house for our return to Oakland, we got into my old truck. Pam followed us out, jumped on the hood, and danced what could have passed as a hoochie coo. <laughs> One year as November approached, Pam asked me and my family to celebrate Thanksgiving on Mount Diablo. This was a celebration that Pam, George, Anne Marie and friends held yearly. It was freezing and stormy, but after we had some drinks, we persevered. <laughs> These were memorable days for all of us. We discovered new painting spots almost weekly. From Black Hawk to China Camp, we painted some of the most beautiful landscape motifs in the Bay Area. I will certainly miss Pam. She was generous, warm-hearted, who touched me and countless others with her presence. On the art scene, she was a spark plug for outdoor painting, a dedicated artist who through her teaching and classes helped many aspiring artists to discover the excitement of painting in the open in one of the most challenging and picturesque areas of the world. Yeah. Sincerely, Terry St. John from Chiang Mai. Mm. Thank you. Now, when when George told me about the Umiak women, I think the reason Terry missed it is because George always told me they were going to be at Lake Merritt, <laughs> which was closer to my house, so I, I'm not sure how that worked. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have something they'd like to say or read or? Oh, come up, you got to talk to the